يقول راجع عفو رب سامعي محمد بن الجزاري الشافعي الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع محبه وبعد إن هذه مقدمة فيما على قارئه أن يعلمه إذ واجب عليهم محتم قبل الشروع أولا أن يعلموا ما خارج الحروف والصفات ليلفظوا بأفصاح اللغات محرر التجويد والمواقف وما الذي رسم في المصاحف تسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين. اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا يا ارحم الراحمين. والله تيتش اس وات بنفيت اس انكريس اس ان نوليدج ان جود مورالز ان ان جود ديز يا رب العالمين. So we continue by Allah سبحانه وتعالى the blessings in this series of classes and explaining الجزرية منظومة المقدمة فيما يجب على قارئ القرآن ان يعلمه. من نظم إمام الحفاظ حجة القراء محمد بن محمد بن محمد بن علي بن يوسف بن الجزري was born 751 and passed away 833 after the migration of our beloved صلى الله عليه وسلم we are in section 4 باب التجويد والأخذ بالتجويد حتم لازم من لم يصحح القرآن آثم لأنه به الإله أنزل وهكذا منه إلينا وصل وهو أيضا حية التلاوة وزينة الأداء والقراءة وهو إعطاء الحروف حقها من كل صفة ومستحقها ورد كل واحد لأصله واللفظ في نظيره كمثله وكمل من غير ما تكلف باللطف في النطق بلا تعسف وليس بينه وبين تركه إلا رياضة بهم بفكه So this section we're in the second line والأخذ بالتجويد حتم لازم من لم يصحح القرآن آثم Implementing tajweed is necessary and mandatory, he's saying. And whoever does not correct his recitation means in a way that will make him avoid the mistakes that change the meaning is a sinner. The one who does not correct his recitation in a way that will help him avoid the mistakes in the meaning is a sinner. Athim. Why? He's saying in the second line, why? Because the matter is, the fact of the matter is that with it, the God sent it. Allah sent the Quran with it, with tajweed. وهكذا and this and thus and in this way it reached us from him سبحانه وتعالى وهكذا منه إلينا وصل we're still talking about how it reached us how the Holy Quran reached us intact right intact without any change even in the way it was written in the presence of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم it is preserved and protected So we mentioned how, how the, the, the first copy of the Holy Quran was compiled. In the time of who? In the time of who the first copy was compiled? Hmm? In the time of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, right? That's what we mentioned last time. And we mentioned how <coughs> precise, how professional how amazing the way that Sayyiduna Zayd bin Thabit radiallahu anhu along with the Sahaba established that mission. And we mentioned why. So I'll tell you now what some of the questions that I might ask you in summary of, of what we covered so far before we move on to the second compilation of the Holy Quran. I'm going to go with you very quickly over some of the questions I wrote already and then we'll go from there. So one of the questions I have here, why Sheikh Ayman in, his, in this copy chose 
من لم يصحح القرآن not من لم يجود القرآن we mention that that Imam Sheikh Ibn Imam Ibn Jazari we mentioned that he had more than one version right more than one version of the turn on the let me show you the the version that Sheikh Ayman depended on in in his in his تحقيق Manuscript that Sheikh Ayman depended on in his tahqiq of this book. When we say tahqiq of a book, means this muhaqqiq, what did he do? This muhaqqiq, he searched for the manuscripts of this book, the original copies of this book. <coughs> Where will they find these manuscripts usually now in these days? Where do you think the main place they would find them? In? Where do people keep manuscripts? Libraries, museums, right? So in one of those libraries or museums in Turkey, because you know in the Ottoman Empire, in the Ottoman time, at the time of the Ottomans, they controlled a big amount of the, of the world. So they have a big amount in Turkey of the treasures of the literary or the literature of the, of the, the Muslims. And also, also you'll find a lot, a lot, a lot, like thousands. You'll find thousands of those manuscripts where in Europe, in the libraries and museums of Europe, why? Because they stole them from our lands. When they occupied the Muslim world, the Arab world, they stole those treasures, those manuscripts. This is why you find, when you're reading a, a Muslim book, then they tell you this is a manuscript in the book, in the library of London, for example, or Germany, or this, or Swiss, Switzerland, or whatever. Because a huge amount of those treasures were stolen by the colonizers who colonized and occupied and stole the resources of the Arab and Muslim world in the 19th century. So, 18th and 19th and 20th part of the 20th century, So when you when you when you make tahqiq of a book, you're gonna try to search for all the map. Of course, now these libraries and museums they have what they have like index, right? They say index. So they so you try to find any manuscript of the of those books. And many times we have more than one manuscript. Some of them, excuse me, written by the author themselves. And that is the greatest treasure. When you find a manuscript written by the author himself. And sometimes you find manuscripts written by the, by the students of the authors, right? Or in the time of the author himself. And this is why those will be very, very great and valuable manuscripts. Now, uh, this, in this case, in our case, Sheikh Ayman, may Allah bless him and reward him for his great efforts. He found, what did he find? He, find, he found uh, a copy that has Imam Ibn Jazari's stamp or signature. And someone wrote it in front of him and he what, what did he do? He, Imam Ibn Jazari approved it. So this is a very valuable, is it there? It's a very valuable manuscript extremely val valuable so let, let me give you a look let's have a look at this one 
call him. Let's see from the beginning. Here is the beginning. See? Malahu, look. Abil Khair. Who's Abil Khair? This is the title of Imam Ibn Jazari. This is his kunya. What is it? Kunya. Kunya means what? Is the title that a person uses to be named, to be called with. And in the, among the Arabs, what does the kunya start with? Abu. Abu. Abu something means what? Father of someone. For example, your father, I would say Abu Hisham, right? Because the eldest son is Hisham, right? And Abu Al-Abid, right? And Abu Sarah, right? Likewise. <clears throat> so, that is called what? Kunya. In Syria and some countries, they say, they, they, mis mis they mistake, they mistake the they mistaken the, the kunya with the last name. They say kunya is, let's say, khamra. And that's wrong. That is called shuhra, not kunya, shuhra. Okay? And kunya is abu so and so. Got it? If you. Uh, so the Prophet ﷺ's kunya was what? Who knows? Oh my God. The, the Muslims don't know the kunya of their prophet. Abu Qasim and Abu Ibrahim, one of his kunyas also. But the famous one, Abu Qasim. Abu Qasim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Malahu Abu Khayr. So, Imam al Jazari's kunya is what? Abu Khayr. Right? You can, can you read? Who can read it here? Who can read here? See here? Abu Al Khair, Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Al Jazari. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Means he dictated it to the writer. Right? This means. Is it, as if it is in his own writing, right? So he's dictating to him and he's looking at it, right? Look how he called this introduction. This is the introduction in what? From the composition of or the writing of our master, Imam Shaykh al Islam, the Shaykh of Islam, Abi al Khayr, Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn al Jazir, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. So that's what the writer is writing. Sahibuhu wa malikuhu. So here it seems that the person who, who was writing. And here the date. Sadis dil qiada. Dil qiada. Sanat thaman mi'a. In which year? 800. Which year? Imam al Jazari passed away. 833. This was written in the year 800. Look how does it start. And here we have another answer for one of the questions I, I raised. Who put the titles of these sections? Who made al Jazari into the section? It's not Imam Jazari himself. It's the scholars who came later. And they said, okay, this section is about, is the introduction. This section is, is Makhari al-Huroof. This section is Sifat al Because you can see here there, it doesn't say this is the introduction. This is Makhari al -Huruf. Can you see? Okay. As you can see, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. يقول راجع عفو رب سامعي محمد بن الجزري الشافعي الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع محبه. As you can see. And here we find some little comments. Now this is where we are. Here. In this section. والأخذ بالتجويد سير والأخذ بالتجويد حتم لازم من لم يصحح القرآن آثم يسير من لم يصحح القرآن آثم من لم يصحح أوكي 
let me show you the end of this manuscript. Then we, subhanAllah, this is a great treasure that we just got it easily over the internet. But the scholars, they will travel from one place to another place to, of course, he traveled there to see the manuscript itself, Shaykh Ayman, and saw it and read it and verified this is, the, this is really what he learned from his sheikhs. And he compared what he learned from his sheikhs orally because he's certified in Jazaliya. He read to his sheikh and what he found in the master and compared and compared with the other masters, compared with the explanations. <coughs> there are explanations of Jazaliya by Ahmad ibn al Jazali, the son of Imam ibn al Jazali, and many other scholars in his time. So he would also look at those manuscripts of those explanations and compare. Do you understand that what tahqiq is? This is tahqiq. So by having all those manuscripts, all this. Uh, uh, literature and he will start comparing and and this is what this is where we, he will tell you and this this uh, word uh, could be man lam and could be la, man lam yujawid and I chose man lam because this 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 you understand this is called what tahqiq I don't know the word in English honestly for this for this thing because you know what <laughs> because the, they don't have that, that, that big or that great heritage like ourselves. They don't. But our, our books, almost every book you find, tahqiq, tahqiq, because we have those, we, have, we were the pioneers of civilization. We were. We were. The Muslims established the, the foundations for the, the European civilization that developed later on. It was started all by the Muslims, right? This is why now you see that the statues and the, 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 the books uh, of so many Muslim scientists of the past, you find their statues in some of the, of the European universities. Algebra, where, what does algebra mean? It's an Arabic word, Jabr. In Arabic and in, in Syria it's called Jabr. Algebra. In, in so many sciences, you find you find that the Muslim scientists, they were the pioneers. You know why? Because they understood Islam, not only how to pray, how to fast. No, they understood the Quran correctly because the Quran guides us. Go and search and reflect in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the day and the night and look at the moons and look at this and look at that. They, they understood Islam to be a religion of life, not only rituals. Let's see the end of this. <clears throat> of this manuscript, let me show you how it ends. So here, وحاذي الوقفة بكل الحركة إلا إذا رمت فبعض الحركة. والحمد لله. Then he says, والحمد لله لها ختام ثم الصلاة بعد والسلام. And you, we will notice, inshallah, when we come to the end of the Jazaliyyah, that it ends here. Then some scholars, they added, they added two lines, just to mention the number of the lines of Jazaliyyah. We'll mention this, inshallah, at the end. Then he says, Alhamdulillah wahda wa sallallahu ala sayyidi al-khalqi muhammadin wa alihi wa sallam arada alayya jami' hadhi al-muqaddimah الولد النجيب السعيد أبو الحسن علي is not easy to read these these uh, these writings if you're not familiar with them right so this is who's saying here he's saying that I have seen or I have verified this this مقدمة then the last manuscript here. Ahmed Khurasan al Asaf from Tabriz wa Fakullah Ta'ala al Nadi wa Rahimullah man Saraf al Ahli wa Habib al Mirli Swahmi. Min Hifrihi. Ah, look here. Uh, it seems this is another person who also verified it or read it in front of another person. So he's saying he read it. He read it from his memory in one session. حفظ إتقان ولفظ إيقان وسمعها بقراءته ابن أبو بكر أحمد
then they have like a type of a stem. SubhanAllah. So this is part of the tahqiq. They come across a word, they don't know what the, that word is, they're going to go and search and, re, and compare with the explanations, with the, with the other manuscripts. Then it comes at the end, this needs a lot of work, a lot of research, a lot of traveling to see those manuscripts with your eyes because not all of the manuscripts are available online, right? Of course not. So this is, this is the tahqiq. We cannot say editing is something greater than editing, much greater <coughs> than editing. So I'm going to ask you, for example, in the, in, the test, in the test of this section, inshallah, why Imam, why Sheikh Ayman chose مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ So you have to tell, instead of مَنْ لَمْ يُجَوِّدْ You have to tell me number one because this is another narration which is found in a manuscript dictated by Imam al-Jazari. And number two, you tell me because this this word man lam will give will give or will will remove the, the difficulty or the haraj from a big amount of Muslims because if we say man lam this means it might mean anyone who does not apply all tajweed rules will be a sinner but when he has this word man lam it means the one who doesn't correct his recitation of the Quran means the one who doesn't avoid the mistakes that change the meaning is a sinner. So in this way, there's less people who might be who might be making this sin. And that's what we want. We don't want people to, to be making sin. We don't want people to fall into, into mistakes. And we also said, if you remember, that Imam Ibn Jazari himself, he, he changed he changed his, this word. As I told you, poets, they write a line of poetry, then after some time, they find a better word for some words. So they, they modify it, right? And I told you this happened. This happened with me many times. In many of the verses I wrote, I find later on a better word, then I modify it. But if someone goes like to, to, my, to my notebook, for example, uh, he will find an old, Virgin, you see, and someone might not get to know the new virgin, and this is what happened in the past. Also, one of the questions: What is the detailed ruling of learning tajweed? What is the detailed ruling of learning tajweed? Another question. Change of the meaning. We said there's lahan jali and lahan khafi, right? They say you can reduce it a little bit so that we don't have this whistling. Reduce the, the major one. You know the major one? The major sound volume. Reduce it a little bit. Change in the meaning. We said lahan jali is a change in the meaning. Any change in the meaning is lahan jali, manifest or clear. Error. How, is, how does that happen? The change in the meaning. Two ways. Either changing a letter or a sifa means changing the khalas tamam. Tamam like this. Jazakallah khair. You did not touch it. <laughs> Yalla touch it. Bismillah, bismillah. Khalas tamam. So changing. Changing a letter or changing means changing the makharaj of the letter or a sifa and uh, how, how can we call that? Uh, an influencing sifa means a sifa that changes the makharaj. Okay? Not all sifa changes the, the letter to another letter, right? If you say kha instead of kha, you did not change the letter. But you, this affected the, the purity or the the clarity of the letter, the beauty of the letter. So, how, how, do, how does the meaning change in the recitation? Some people change the makhraj of the letter or an influencing sifa or a main sifa, let's say. Or, who can tell me the third possibility of changing the meaning? How, does, how do people change the meaning? That sometimes they change the letter 
or the sifa, an influencing sifa of that letter that will change it into another letter or what is the third possibility? I'rab, right? I'rab means the haraka of the, of the last letter in the word. If you say Rabbahu instead of Rabbuhu, you change the meaning upside down. Did you get it? Who can tell me? Tell me again. How? What are the types of changing the meaning, your sister? The first type is what? What's the first type of changing the meaning? Huh? Lahim jali is the mistake in which you change the meaning. How? What are the types of changing the meaning? Changing a main sifa that will change the letter into another letter. What else, your sister? The second type? Changing the makhraj? The i'rab. Changing the i'rab, which means what? Changing the haraka of the last letter. Because in Arabic, as you know, how do we know the position of the word in a sentence? From what do we know? Do we know it from the order of the words or from the, the haraka of the last letter in the word? From the haraka of the last letter, and that's the i'rab. Got it, Yashe? So how do, how many types of changing the meaning do we have? The first one is what? Changing? The letter itself means the makhraj or changing the haraka which is the a'rab or changing a sifa, a main sifa that will change the letter into another letter. Right. What is the definition of tajweed in the language and in the, in the terminology of the Muslim scholars? And what is the difference between Tajweed and the classical Arabic speech? And what are the types of lahin or mistake in the, in the recitation of the Quran? What are the two types of error or mistakes that people make? What are they? Lahin jali and lahin khafi. Lahin jali and lahin khafi. We explained them before. Now, from there, what else do we have? What else do we have? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Let's remember some other questions in the previous classes that we covered. Give me some of the examples about the ahadith in which the Prophet sallallahu encouraged the Muslims to memorize the Quran. This is a big topic, a big reason because we will know that the main reliance for the Muslims is what? The oral transmission. Let me also add this one. What is what is the main reference or reliance in the preservation of the Holy Quran. What is it? The written transmission or the oral transmission? The oral transmission, right? The oral transmission. What else? How how would or how did the Sahaba write the Holy Quran? In the time of the Prophet In the time of the Prophet, how did they write the Quran? And what is the value of those parchments that were written and compare it with their own copies 
their own, let's say, personal copies? These are very important questions. What else did we cover? And give two examples of the great number of Huffad and teachers of the Holy Quran in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who can tell me those two examples? In the battle of Ma'un, in the, in the incidents of Ma'una, 70 of the Qurra were killed. And in the in Yawm al Yamama, let's say in the time of the Prophet وسلم, and the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. In the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, in Yawm al Yamama, also 70 of the Qurra were killed. Imagine, so if the 70 were killed, this means there was a huge number, right, of the Qurra. What else? <clears throat> How did, how did the idea of, of compiling the Holy Qur'an started? Start, how did it start? You have to tell me, to explain how it started. You tell me in the battle of Al-Yamama when the Sayyidina Abu Bakr was fighting those who were threatening to finish off the Muslim state. Sayyidina Umar came to him and he told him the Qurra are being killed. There is a big number of the Qurra were killed. Right? So I see we should compile the Qur'an. Then what did he tell him? Etc. Etc. Then explain the process in which or the process of compiling the Qur'an. Compiling the Holy Qur'an in the time of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr. Led by Sayyiduna who? Zayd, right? Zayd bin Thabit radiallahu anhu. Right? That was what we covered last time, right? I think we might have missed some questions. I'll, I'll see if I'm going to add some questions, I'll let you know. Or let me go over the, the main one, the main file. So that's all what we covered so far, guys, in this. But as you can see, they're extremely important, extremely important topics. Tajweed, Tartil, okay. Tartil. What is the definition of Tartil? What is the definition of Tartil? And the detailed ruling of learning Tajweed. We explained that, huh? What's the ruling of learning Maharaj? What's the learning of learning the Sifat that affect the meaning? What is the learning of learning the other rules like Idgham, Ifa, etc. We, I already told you that question, right? The detailed ruling of learning Tajweed. You can see the picture there. This is the detailed ruling. Huh? We explained it. And I asked the sister who? I asked you to make it in English. Did you? She made it in English also in the slide. So you can see it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to review it, inshallah, just to make sure. Okay. Uh, what's the diff difference between Tajweed and the correct Arabic speech or the classical Arabic speech? Okay. The ruling of learning, okay, did I tell you the learning of learning, the, the ruling of learning, the theoretical rule of Tajweed? Did we mention that? We said that's fault kifaya, right? Communal obligation to learn the theoretical rules of Tajweed. Now, if someone is applying, reading and applying Tajweed, but he doesn't know hey, this is Ifa, this is Idram, is that okay? Of course. We don't care about the, the rule if he's applying it, right? But there has to be a group of Muslims who knows who know the, the theoretical rulings. Why? So that they can teach others. This is Idram, this is Idram. Do you see the point? Okay.
Okay, what else? The two types of lahan or mistakes in recitation in the recitation of the Quran. Describe the recitation of the Prophet sallallahu So I added here, what is tartil? And describe describe the recitation of the, of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam according to the Hadith, right? كانت قراءة يقطع قراءته and we said tartil and then we said how the wahi started and what was the what was the position of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when the wahi started? And what was the reaction of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Who, who can tell me? When the wahi is coming to him, he started what? He started reciting quickly right then the quran then allah told him he told him like don't worry we will combine it in your heart right so right from the beginning rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is showing us that we need a lot of repetition guys I'm telling myself and you if you don't keep reviewing every day at least at least at least 10 pages at the very least for a half year, every day if you don't review, you will forget. Look, our beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right from the beginning, he's giving us this sunnah and this rule that you need to repeat, repeat with him, and repeat the ayat so that you you don't forget them. Okay, the encouragement we mentioned, the encouragement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the Sahaba to memorize the Quran, learn the Quran, read and rise. We got all those hadith, right? Then we mentioned about the copies that were written in the time of the Prophet وسلم, the value of those copies. Why, why wasn't the Quran compiled in the time of the Prophet We mentioned this last class. So I'm already giving you the questions of the test. So it doesn't make any sense that you come to me and in the test and you take 80 out of 100. You're not going to pass. You have to take 90. Very minimum is 90. Right, Shay? I'm already giving you the questions. Right? Okay. And the story of the, of the incident of Mauna and how Rasulullah sallam felt very sad for them and made made what made qunut for a whole month then how the first compilation of the holy quran started we mentioned that and how sayyidina abu bakr and sayyidina umar had a discussion then they they brought sayyidina zaid and they made the copies as you can see in the picture this is where we stopped right now we have this copy of the quran right sister we have this copy who made this copy who made this copy? Who made it? Who copied it? Who wrote it? Sayyidina Zaid. Where did he copy it from? From these parchments, which were what? The sacred parchments that were written when? In the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? In his presence. So this is just a copy of this. And what did he have? As witnesses, this is how you have to explain. Before he accepts any of these parchments, he will ask for how many witnesses? Two witnesses, right? Two witnesses. How many witnesses will Sayyidina Zaid ask? And what about the ayat? that were found only with one person you have to tell me where those ayat memorized only by one person what did Sayyidina Zaid miss 
These are very important questions because some people think, ah, oh, Zaid, he was writing the Quran and he missed some ayat. Oh, he didn't know. How did he know he missed some ayat? Because he knows them, but he didn't find what? He didn't find the copy, the written copy that was written in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is why Sayyidina Zaid, he said, we missed some ayat because there was a committee working with him. So he said, we missed these ayat. We know them, the last two ayat of Surah Tawbah and some and I in Surah al Surah Al-Ahzab. So, and when he found it with one person, what happened? And who was that person? And why he accepted his testimony even without having another witness with him? That was all the previous class, right guys? Then at the end we have this copy. And did the Muslims need that copy? They never needed it in the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Two years, right? The time of Sayyidina Umar, how many years? Ten years, they didn't need it. And some years of the time of Sayyidina Uthman, they didn't need it. Why? This is a very important question. You have to know it. Why Muslims did not need that first compiled copy of the Quran? until some years until some years in that time of Sayyiduna Uthman because the main reliance was what guys? was the oral transmission still there were a lot of Qurra, a lot of teachers transferring, transmitting this Holy Quran generation by generation, right? so they did not need they did not need that copy then comes this class. So that was the, the last class here with Sayyidina Zaid. And we mentioned, okay. And why it was not combined, we mentioned that question. Okay. These are the answers or the reasons why it was not combined. And we said, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said that the, the person who will get the greatest reward in regard to the masahif is Sayyidina Abu Bakr, is Abu Bakr. Okay. So that's where we stopped. How much time do you have in the camera assistant? You know how much time we covered so far? 43 minutes. 40? Okay. Much. So inshallah, if Allah wills, we will continue next time with a very 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 important a very very important now I, I gave you all the questions from the beginning until now from the beginning of this section until now you all have them and if you miss something check the video inshallah next time right away we will start with now an incident happens in Iraq where Muslims start a type of discussion that was about to turn into a type of a fight about the Quran. Someone is reading in a different way, in a different way from someone else. So one of these Muslims he said, No, my reading is right, your reading is not right. The other said, No, my reading is right. Then one of the sahaba will see this and he will he realizes that the danger of this incident and he will run back to al Madina al munawwara to the Khalifa, to the leader, to the president of the Muslim state at that time Sayyidina Uthman and he will tell him catch up Muslims started having some differences in reading the Quran what did he do? now he's, he asked for that hobby that was preserved with who? in the house of who? Sayyidina Hafsa radiallahu anha, the daughter of Sayyidina Umar. It was preserved with Sayyidina Abu Bakr. When he passed away, it was preserved with Sayyidina Umar, the, the Khalifa, the second Khalifa, the second leader. Then, after that, because they did not choose Sayyidina Uthman right away, it was kept in the house of who? Our mother, the mother of the believers, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Sayyidina Hafsa, the daughter of Umar radiallahu anhum. So Sayyidina Uthman will ask Sayyidina Hafsa, please give us the copy that you have. 
and we will see what he will do. Radi Allahu anhu wa arba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen to the speech and follow its best. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi.